Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could all join us once again. Please join us in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, our cups truly do runneth over because you are our Father. You are our Creator. You are the one that leads, guides, and directs us. And we are the ones that follow. And we know, dear Lord, sometimes that uh, when life throws at us a certain negativity in, in all kinds of different degree, we are quick to, we have learned to be quick to turn to you and trust you. And when we don't, we have learned how difficult life can be. I pray, dear Lord, that for these unspoken prayers before you at this time, you know every heart, every need, every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them always in perfect season. Also, Father, before you we bring Rachel. And also, Father, we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, wherever they are, whatever they are doing. We pray for their safety and speedy return to the sheepfold. And we pray for all those who are studying your word. Father, because it is a daily necessity for our souls and our life. And we pray for all those being affected by current storms, earthquakes, fires, and now war once again. We pray for their safety, Father, and that they all turn to you. <coughs> and as always, Father, we pray for Israel. We pray for our nation, for thy kingdom to come for thy will to be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, come, Lord, come. And we pray for those first responders who are on the front lines, always helping your children, as well as our military who are in arm's way, or, or who are yet to go into arm's way as we speak. And we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us through thy word this day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, getting back into our Father's word, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But before we go there, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we are now back into doing uh, our in-house lectures every other week, uh, which we've been, I guess, absent. There, it's debatable, anywhere from two to four months. I can't really pin it down. It's, it's been a while, uh, but I, I look forward to, to this. But um, before I put out this lecture today and before meeting, I put out on um, those that would be attending a certain question, or basically it was really a statement of what we're going to be covering today. And really the, the, the caption of this lecture is, why do people, as us being Christians, why do people hate us so much and want to kill us? Um, <clears throat> now this can be going way back, but we're in present times today and we know this being 2023 so it'll date this lecture on YouTube and Facebook but uh, Israel was attacked now we know uh, well many of you probably don't know those of you that are God's elect will, will follow this but uh, not all are chosen now can anybody tell me was there any significance in God's um, festivals when Israel was attacked? Does anybody know? It was interesting because for the first time our Shepherd's Chapel taught uh, about the eighth day and what it meant, what it represented and how it came into creation. And it's important to note 
that when Israel was attacked was after sundown on the 6th, which, tech, or, um, yeah, sundown on the 6th, which technically was October 7th. And that was the date that we honored and celebrated Eighth Day Creation. Think it's a coincidence? Absolutely not. By seeing what has happened and how it's happening, now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be on, on here and saying you need to follow this group or you need to follow that group and you need to think this way or you need to think that way. What I am going to tell you is that the way you need to think is what Father puts forth in his word. Now what are we experiencing in this world as we speak today? Hatred. Pure evil and hatred towards different peoples. Now, granted, whatever side you stand on, the reason you stand on that side is because you believe and have been taught to believe what you believe. And some of that belief teaches hatred. But even though uh, you may not be being taught hatred by certain actions that come and affects you and your family and those around you can result in hatred towards another people. And you have your reasons why. I understand all that. But what's very, very and vitally important is that we focus on how God looks at all this. And this is what we're going to be covering today. I thought it was very interesting because I was going to bring this this lecture out last week, but I was held up uh, by our Father to not do it until today. I guess in, until the dust started to settle. It's interesting because we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 today, and this is called, and I've used this many times, called the love chapter. Now, I use this chapter in in most marriage ceremonies. Not all, but most. Because it, it shows uh, what love is and, and what it represents. But why I was being held to teach it now because of what's going on in this world today. And what's going on in this world today you can you can sit back and look and say, well, how are people behaving? Well, quite frankly, people are behaving badly, very badly. Couldn't you say though that it's always been this way? We're just seeing more of it, as far as it being in our faces with the media and social media and. Are you saying about? has there always been hatred? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, people have treated people badly. Well, you can go back to the garden. Uh, Cain didn't slew Abel because he loved him. But the difference um, now is that there's no there's no moral ah, you're, compass. You're, you're, you're hitting on something very important, that word moral. Mm -hmm. But what's really, what it comes down to, and we'll get into it in just a moment, what it comes down to, is everyone following God? Because both sides of the turmoil today, well, there's more than two sides, but the, the right and, we can't even say, I'm not even going to go there right and wrong side. I'm just going to say there's two different sides of opinion. Now, you got to make your own decision what side you want to be on. And, but here, here lies the problem. Both sides think the right, period. And, and they feel that uh, what they're doing is of God. But here lies the problem. If that was the case, and it was of God, 
then they would be following what we're going to be covering today. So again, the question I would really like to does anybody have a comment before we get going on this about why things are happening the way they are? Why do people want to kill other people because of the situation that they're in? I mean, it was foretold. It was it was it was prophesied that the love of many will wax cold. Mm -hmm. And it'll be brother against brother and uh, why, uh, mother against daughter and all True. that. True. Why? Because the king of the world in, in possession of people's minds. Yeah, I know who you're talking about, but in case somebody... Satan. Had, so he's, he's the, not prince, the king of the, world. of the world. He's the prince of the yeah. world. Meaning what? That his influence is rampant mm -hmm. um, just well just simple stuff like what happened to me yesterday I was uh, going down the interstate and I was in the slow lane doing the speed limit and there's traffic around and a guy was coming on the on-ramp to the interstate and because in his opinion I didn't didn't he either slow down or move over. He had to speed up a little bit to get on the off ramp, which you should do anyways. He decided to give me the one finger salute. You know, now if I was a bitter person or an evil person or a person that wants to um get revenge I could, as other people have done, pull out a weapon and start doing something stupid over something like that. Meaning, there's all kinds of things happening today that are ticking people off. And it seems like the majority of people today are on a short fuse. And if it doesn't go their way, God help them. So this is what we're going to be covering today. So with that uh, format, please open your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, and it reads, Though I, now who, who, who's speaking here? Who's, who's writing this down? Paul. Paul. Uh, well, it could have been Luke scribing it, but it was Paul's words coming from our Father, being inspired. Though I speak... With the tongues, now this word tongues, and we've covered it before, is languages. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. Now here, here is our first word that we need to make sure that we're, we're aware of. That word charity in the ancient language is agapa. And what that means is love. So whenever this word charity is being used, it yep. automatically represents the yep. word love. So listen to Paul. He says, though I speak with the languages of men and of angels. Now why is he separating men and, and angels? Because one's fleshly and one's spiritually. That's everybody. You know, so in other words, I can talk to everybody. <laughs> And have not love, charity, I am become as sounding brass or tingling cymbal. Meaning what? I'm just, I'm just blowing smoke. I'm just talking to the wind. In other words, I have this knowledge. I have this, this, this language that I can speak to people. I can even speak to spiritual people. Angels. God. Jesus. However... If I don't do it with love, it's not going to come across right. Mm -hmm. Now that's critically important. Really, this chapter is a, a vitally important for us to understand in this world today. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, that's teaching, and understand all mysteries. 
Now that doesn't mean he understands every single thing there is to understand in the world. That means he understands all mysteries when it comes to our Father. It has been revealed to him. He has been. He has learned this. Remember, he he was taught. He was a Pharisee of Pharisee uh, back in the day, and understand all mysteries and. All knowledge. That doesn't mean Paul's saying, I have all the knowledge in the world. No. That means he understands God's word and God's plan for mankind. And though I have all faith, how much faith? Listen. So that I could remove mountains. Remember what, what Jesus said. If you had faith of a mustard seed, you could ask this mountain to move. No, is he talking about physically a mountain? No, he's talking about nations talking about peoples you got you got that kind of faith and which means you are following God to the letter and you need something to promote that ministry or whatever work God has given you to do it's going to happen no matter if you're up against a hundred thousand people in a nation they will adhere to what needs to be done with you leading the way through Jesus Christ. And have and he, let me yeah. read it all together. Mm -hmm. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, have not love, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. So what is Paul laying out here? Mm -hmm. Is that hey, I got it. I understand it. I got it together. The Lord's using me. He called me. Granted, I went against him at first. That's when he was Saul. But when when the Lord got a hold of him by the bootstraps on the road to Damascus, Saul's life changed, and even to his name being Paul. In other words, instead of uh, persecuting the church, now he was promoting the Christian church a lot of people say well that, that's God called him and he did this yet but you gotta understand something Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisee I mean on that road to Damascus he had papers in his hand that he could persecute the church from where from from the high priest in Jerusalem so he had authority according to men, you know. But what was Paul doing at that time? Why was he per persecuting the Christian church so fervently? Because he believed in what he was taught about the Christians. That the Christians were evil. It was all uh, uh, a, a, a bad sect. Conspiracy against them. Conspiracy against the against the temple of God and Jesus wasn't um, the true Messiah and all that. And he believed all this. Why? Because what he was following. That's the key. He was following what he was taught. He said, well, wait a minute now. Wasn't he taught from the Torah? He yes. The he was taught from by from the Torah, but by man. Yeah. And it wasn't until Christ came, and even the uh, apostles had difficulty at that point in time, such as uh, teaching Gentile versus uh, mm -hmm. the Jewish uh, peoples only. So, um, coming out the gate, we've got to realize something here. Paul had all this knowledge, all this wisdom, all this faith, but he's saying, if I don't do this with love, I'm going to fail. That's what he was missing. I'm going to fail. Verse 3 says, And though I bestow or give all my goods to feed the poor, that means, that doesn't mean he gave everything away. That means he, everything that he did was to bring forth the ministry of Jesus Christ. And though I give my body to be burned, that means he's out in the desert sun, he's out there and he's, he's baked, baked in the sun. Sacrificing. Huh? 
sacrificing yeah. himself basically absolutely and have not charity have not love it profiteth me nothing so he keeps going to this word love and he keeps saying look I got all this I got all this stuff I got all the blessings I got all the knowledge I got all the wisdom I got all this grace and this mercy but you know what if I take it all but I don't deal with it through love I'm gonna fail and and my message is gonna fail verse 4 says charity or love He's going to explain what it does now. What, what, what is he talking about this love? See, a lot of people think love today is a husband and wife or a boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever the case may be uh, or a child for a parent or, or a puppy dog or what, you know, that, that kind of love. No, this love that our Father wants us to know and understand and to become part of surpasses all understanding. See, it's above and beyond. Just go ahead and unhook him. He's going to go nuts. That's all right. And um, fit right in. the thing is, um, if we don't have that, 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 that kind of love that God has, that's, that's the point. This is God's love. That's what he wants us to learn about, his kind of love. If we don't have that kind of love in us, we're not going to be able to deal with the situations that are happening today. And that's why there's so much hatred today. That's why there's so much evil today. They're not loving one another. They're not even loving each other. You know, they think they are. They think they know what love is. It's just, I, I've used this principle before, but it, it, it's, it's apropos here. When I got married to Donna, I got married because I loved her. But you know what? I really didn't know how to love until I, till the Lord called me to his service and taught me what true love was. And then that love just blossomed, just, just, just expanded so large. It's, it's like... Um, it's hard to describe. Well, we learned how to serve one another through serving our Father. The more that we learned about Father and how He thinks, you know, His plan, His intentions for us, the more we were able to relate that to our relationship. Yes. That's true. Who said it? multiple times over the years you know this whole book is basically considered a love letter mm -hmm. you know if you take it properly yes if you understand it and that understanding can only come through the the spirit of god within you that calls you to that understanding yes he wants us to open up these pages that's why they're written down he's not going to force feed us and he's not going to give us all the information just willy-nilly I guess you've got to read it with love before hey. you can teach it with love huh? absolutely but the thing is here lies the problem what? people don't understand that <laughs> yeah. they don't I mean that's why they're behaving so badly you know uh, what verse am I on okay Ooh. verse 4 yeah. love charity suffereth long that means it does what it endures it endures don't overlook that <laughs> because sometimes you don't want to endure <laughs> what you're going through you just don't want to do it love suffereth long and is what kind, kind. being kind to a person that you don't even know and bugging you <laughs> but it's okay love charity envieth not you don't envy what another person has what do you think is happening today mm. people want what other people have their land their, their land whatever their uh, but you know you got to understand and and again i'm not taking sides although i will before i'm over um 
that um, let's let's take Palestine. Palestine um, before all this started, way before all this started, was a really nice place. Mm. I mean, yeah, it was crowded, mm. but you, you realize people from Israel used to drive there on a day trip for vacation. To no, not vacation, but uh, I'd call it a staycation, because it's not that big. Yeah. Um, they would go to the beach and and go to the clubs and and all these things out. And it was and it was a very fruitful area. But because of certain situations that took place after that, and because of uh, let's see envy maybe um, or or some other words we're going to be getting into it here in a minute. They became thinking differently. And then other people came in and were voted into office. And they wanted to destroy Israel. And not only Israel, but the United States as well. Now, again, I started this. How can you love those that hate you? You know. I mean, because some, and I'm not just talking about regular old hate. I'm talking about people who want to do you in. They will. I got to be careful because the young ones here, but they'll they'll do some traumatic things to the human body in their uh, guise of, in their opinion, doing what's right. Now. It's going to be on both sides. The same thing is going to be taking place to a certain degree. Not as severe. Doesn't matter. You know what? Death is death. Yeah. But it's only death. You know? Well, we're not going there yet. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's just a body. Um, verse 4 says, Love suffereth long and is kind. Love charity envieth not charity or love vaunteth not itself. What does that mean? Does not push itself forward onto someone else. On their, over their uh, uh, opinions, we'll say. Is not puffed up. They don't, if, if you're bringing forth love, you are not a proud, puffed up person. You just aren't. You know, you've learned that doing things God's way will provide you a way to succeed. Now, it might not be in that situation, but you're going to succeed because you're following Him. But listen to verse 5. Love, it doesn't say love there, but that's what, the, the, mm. what it means. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Love, charity, seeketh not her own. Meaning they are not selfish. Mm -hmm. Is not here, here, here is not easily provoked. That doesn't mean you're not going to get provoked. Mm -hmm. it means you're not easily provoked. Love thinketh no evil. Right. Well, evil's what sin. <clears throat> In other words, if you're loving the way you're supposed to be loving, you're not going to go out and do evil. Simple as that. Now, can we say something's wrong with this picture in this world today? Yeah. You know. Six. Love rejoiceth not in iniquity. Doesn't rejoice in sin. That's right. Whether it's their sin or somebody else's sin. Right. But rejoiceth in the truth or with the truth. That's what you rejoice about. You're doing what's right. They're doing what's right. Whatever the case may be. That you can rejoice over. You can live together. You can have peace together. You can share life together. Do you realize in Israel and Palestine, they used to share everything together? Used to. You know. Now granted, if you go, depending on how far back you want to go, right. uh, with David, 
you know. Um, but who told David to go into that area? Who gave David that land? It wasn't the Palestinians. They were already there. Oh, no, they weren't. Yes, they were. Search your history. However, God says, this is, this is the land I want for you. This is the land of milk and honey. Now, I want you to go in there, and I want you to take this over. Being what? Why? You say, well, why did God do that? God's causing this difficulty? No. Well, God wanted to bring love into the area. There you go. God wanted to bring peace and tranquility, but there was no peace and tranquility in the area. Guess what? There still no. isn't. Guess what? It's going to remain that way until Jesus Christ sets up his kingdom. Yes, sir, I don't care what they say on TV right now. Yeah. You know, uh, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, Israel, uh, Lebanese, uh, Syria. Look, the word tells us who's going to be coming up against Israel in the last days. <coughs> And a lot of people are saying this is the last days. We are in the last days. There's no doubt about that. Parable fig tree declares that. But is this war getting ready to take place the end of war? No, not yet. No, but it's leading up to it. Yeah. And it's going to be in the same exact region. You know. So, you know, a lot of people I was talking to, uh, see, I've been following this stuff all along. Mm-hmm. Because you're supposed to keep your eyes to the east, meaning to, to Jerusalem in particular, and surrounding areas. So, almost every day, that's what I do. When I can get the information, believe it, you really got to dig it out. It's not like it is on, on every station now. But when this happened, I knew it was coming. And I knew from where it was coming. But what what was... I don't want to say comical because it's 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 death and destruction, but a lot of people, well, why is this happening? You know, I can't believe this is happening. It's, it's, they weren't looking. I foretold you all things. I talked to one girl. I said, what do you think about uh, what's happening in uh, with Israel? She goes, what's happening? <laughs> I, I looked at, now this is three or four days ago. Yes. This is way after all this started. I and uh, I said, Israel's at war. Really? Well, I've got a friend in Israel. Maybe I need to yeah. send her a, a, a call. A, a, no, not a call, but an uh, email. Email. Facebook and I said, I said, I said, yeah, that might be a good idea. <laughs> and um, so I asked her the next day, right, if she contacted her friend, and she said, no, I didn't have a chance. Oh, uh, <laughs> it wasn't important. It's not that important. She told me she doesn't even look at the watch the news, and well, some some people don't. Yeah. Well, it might be good for you them. know. But where am I going with this? Is that we've got to stay informed, folks. You can't. And what I mean by informed, rightly informed. First off, coming from the Word of God. Start there. And then the Father will allow you to receive information off this boob tube over here, yeah. you know, or, or off the Internet. But there's so much misinformation and lies and all this negativity. You've got to be able to rightly divide what you're receiving in. Now, the only way you can do that is to have our Father teach you through His Word and by His Spirit what to absorb and what to throw away. It's just like rightly dividing the Word of God. You can hear the Word of God from all kinds of different preachers, but that doesn't mean that they're all correct. Mm. You know, And you've got to decide who you want to follow. You follow the Word of God. You don't follow me or any other person out there. You follow the Word of God, what the Word of God says. Again, this is what people are going to say today. Mm. Well, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I'm following... Uh, um, Brother John, I'm, I'm following. I'm following God. I'm following. Uh, um, what's what's the word for Muslim? The, the Quran. No, God. Um, Allah. 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 I'm, I'm following. I remember talking to a guy um, at flea market one time, and we're discussing about God, 
And I said, well, I follow God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I do too. I follow Allah. I said, well, are you telling me that Allah is God? He says, it's the same thing. So, see, now I'm not judging, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what people think that their God is the right God. Now, you have to come to the Word of God to make your decision. What the Word of God tells you what to do or what not to do. Or who to follow and who not to follow. Now, I've read this, this book many times over and in other languages and other Bibles as well. And I, I have never been able to read where this Bible has told me to follow Christ in the way where I need to go out and execute other people. Although, he does have a formal plan of execution for those that are evil and want to cause evil to his children. But then, you say, well, how, how can that be love? If you're told to dispatch that person to, to God, because he's the judge. I'm talking about like, like, a, um, uh, like let's say, murder. Forget the war just for a minute, just plain murder. God says, two or three witnesses, you basically bring them to me. And how do you bring them to God? By execution. If, if they're found guilty. Two or three witnesses. <coughs> well, if they're found guilty, then you dispatch them to the Father. How is that love? I mean, think about that. How is that love? That is love. You say, well, what kind of love is that? That's the love of our Father. Because that person will never receive love on this planet that, that, that did that deed. The person that they murdered, of course, is with our Father. So they're in his loving arms. Now, that person who committed the atrocity has to be dispatched to him, meaning executed, if they're found guilty, and Father judges them at that point. But that takes away their misery. Do you realize that? That takes away their misery. Now, a lot of people don't understand that. They say, well, no, no, that, 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 I, I don't believe it. Well, you can believe what you want. That's our freedom, free will. But the thing is, our Father wants us to understand, we're not walking mats. And if we play like we are, we're going to get walked on. And I don't mean just walked on. I mean killed. Plain and simple. It's only a body. Huh? It's only a body. It's your soul that's important. It is your soul that's important. But we need to live on this planet as best we can in the face of evil. And evil's all around us. Mm -hmm. Um, verse 5? Mm -hmm. Six. Six. Seven. 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 Beareth, love, beareth, that's stigo. St this word beareth means endure patiently. Mm -hmm. Beareth endures patiently all things. You say, well, wait a minute now. How long was, must we endure hatred and evil? The end. In other words, we're not to stand up for our own rights. Well, it says here we're supposed. It says endure patiently, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be a walking mat. It just means you're enduring it and you're thinking clearly. See, it's when you get away from this patient endurance, you don't think clearly anymore. You start thinking with what they got. Hatred. Well, I'm going to kill you because you killed me or before. my 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 family or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to kill you now. Or you didn't give me what I wanted, like yeah. John Wick. I don't know anything about that, so I don't know. 
believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Now, just because he, our Father says to endure all things does not mean that you sit on your butt and do nothing. That just means when it's attacking you, and you will be attacked. We're being attacked almost every day. Not as severe as what's going on in Israel and Palestine right now, but it's all around this world. And our Father's saying, look, when you're being attacked, you endure, you start, use your head, think clearly. Now, what is our Father really trying to get through to us is why this is happening. See, if we know why it's happening, then we can endure it better. If we understand why it's happening, we may not agree with it, or agree to the, the way it's going down, but we understand it. We understand where the other side's coming from. Not that we agree, but we understand it. Is this basically talking about, like, use the current event, the hostages? You're basically in an evil situation. You're being treated unfairly. So you have to endure. And you have to endure. With love. love. Patience. And patience. Well, how can you love your captor? Well, you love God. Huh? You love God. No. You love God. Yes, love. of you course. You love their but soul, but not the body. That's <laughs> it. You love what God created in the individual. Well, if you love God, then you do what he says. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he says, endure it. But listen. Charity or love never faileth. Ah. It never fails. Hmm. Now, he's, he, he put that in there for a reason. It's because when you're doing this God's way, and you're, you're loving properly, it's never going to fail you. It's going to see you through the difficult times. And there are difficult times. Some more difficult than others. Right now we've got some people that are going through terrible, difficult times. And they go, oh, they're, 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 they're homeless now and they need food and they need water and they need shelter and all that. I understand. Should we help to bring forth food and water? Absolutely. They're peoples. They're God's children. Now some people say, oh, no, they're not. There you go. You're falling into it again. Beloved, we're all God's children. I don't care what race, creed you are. Now, I remember years ago, I was doing mu music ministry in this uh, flea market before I got into regular ministry. And there was this song. I can't remember who did it. But it was called, We're All God's Children. And I can't remember all the lyrics, but... Um, there's Muslim, Jewish, Christian to something, 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 whatever. Kind of Jew. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to sing that in the congregation. But back in those days, you had to go through a, a little... Approval board? Mm -hmm. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> one guy. But, one guy. But I asked him. I said, well, let me, let me play this for you. And he's taught me right off. Oh, you can't, you can't play that. You can't play that. He says, it's not true. Oh. Right? Okay. Um, so not all God's children? Well, according to him, no. <laughs> you know, if you weren't a uh, Southern Baptist Christian, well, right. I shouldn't yeah, say yeah, that. I'm yeah, sorry. I, I hear Forgive you. me, Lord. I know. I know. Um, but well, some people d differentiate the difference between God's creation and God's children. Because God's children, you would think would love him and do what he said. Mm -hmm. creation well, not he so did much. say, if you love me, you would, you would hear me. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, we all have bad kids. And what, he, <laughs> what Christ spoke of was at the time to the Pharisee and Sadducees, he said, you follow your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. you know? And he was declaring at that point, there's a, yes, there's a difference of peoples, difference of attitudes. Mm -hmm. they, they, they wanted Christ dead. Well, how is that loving? You want, do you want the one who's pure love to die? Mm. Well, they did. Mm. And guess what? They still do. Mm. And that's why we have the problems that we have today. 
But bigger than that problem is, is that even on the Christian side of all this, mm -hmm. there's hatred. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pure hate. Now, I understand it. I mean, if, if, if something happened like that to my kids... My parents are, well, my parents are with him now, but if, when they were alive, or my uh, brother, sister, whatever, I would get upset. Um, and I'm not saying that's, that's the wrong thing to do, which we're going to get into here in a minute. But, um, well, let me, let me go there. Matthew, I want to go now to Matthew chapter 5. I just want to read a couple verses. Verse 21. This is Jesus speaking now. Yep. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. That means way back when, uh, like the Ten Commandments time. Thou shalt not kill. Now, is that is that misquoted? No. What, no, it isn't. Thou shalt not murder is what what it actually says. But let's stick with the word kill. Thou shalt not kill. That's what you heard. That's what you've been taught. It's been taught all the way up to that point. That's right. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm. True statement. Okay. But listen to what Jesus says in verse 22. Yeah. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother, here's the key, without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. So in other words, what Jesus is saying, hey, there's going to come a time when there's going to be cause for you to be angry. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a need for you to take control and to do what needs to be done to protect not only you, but those around you. Now remember, God himself called Abraham to battle. God himself called David to battle. Remember what God thought about David. To, David, to God, was, had his own heart. But why couldn't David build the temple? You know why. Because he was a man of war. Mm -hmm. So, maybe... There was a little bit too much hatred in there. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying this is a fact, but something had to be wrong. Even though he had God's heart, you know, God loved him. But God used David to war against peoples. In the same region that's warring today. So... He said, well, I don't understand. How can that be love? What did God want when to remove a people from a land that they already possessed? It was not God. Well, technically, God owns it. God owns it all. You know, we think we own this piece and that right. piece. No, no. God owns it all. Let's, let's start there. Mm -hmm. He's the one that says where you can go and where you can stead down. Yeah. So God says, I want you, David, to go over here and I want you to eliminate those people. Now what did he say at certain times? Every man, woman, and child. He said, how in the world can that be loved? Because of what they would be teaching. Or what would happen to God's children that would go in the region and still have them around. Now, the problem with Israel, is, no, they didn't. Oh, they went in, yeah, but they didn't do and they did defeat them, but not all. They decided, oh, we're only going to go so far. Yeah. Now, let's take that to today. What Israel has been doing with Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in the north. We're going to fight you, and they're going to go fight, and they went and fought. Only up to a certain point, and then they decided to come back. Yep. What happened in this country with Korea? We're going to go and fight. We're going to defeat the enemy. Only to a certain point, and then we're going to come back. What happened? 
There's the parallel. What happened in Vietnam? Same exact thing. We're going to go in there and fight. We're going to defeat the enemy. Only to a certain point. And then we're going to draw back. What happened in Iraq? What happened in Iran? Uh, not Iran. Um, uh, uh, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Telling us what? Who's following God? I don't know, but we ain't. <laughs> Who is? I know. Right. Well, see, this is what our Father wants us to understand. Look, the reason all this stuff is happening around the world, and in our own particular lives, even in this little yeah. section of corner of, of North Carolina, is that if we're not following God, His way, mm -hmm. we're going to face the consequences. Mm -hmm. We're going to face those consequences. Right. Now, I want to go one more place before I end here today. Okay. Um, in Psalms. 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 That's um, Psalms 91. That guy David, I think, wrote a lot of this. Psalms 91. Yeah. That guy David. Again. <laughs> got all this stuff going on. There's all this hatred. Now... Let's get away from the war just for a minute, although this is the out, um, outline the thing that's taking place because of the war. Got all these people in these countries that are just coming together in, 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 in um, they're not technically rioting at this point. Protesting. Protesting. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. And by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Now, did that take place when Israel, when Palestine, or excuse me, when, when and Hamas came in and killed a bunch of Israelites? No. Was there protests around the world? No. I'm sure there were. I didn't see any. Really? Okay. I didn't see any. I saw some people meeting at the White House with their signs saying, "Here's the uh, Israel flag and we're for Israel." Oh, you're you're asking a different question. I'm talking about massive you're amounts of people that are protesting, yeah. uh, because that Israel is being mistreated. No, I'm saying that the Palestine is being mistreated. That's why they're protesting. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that um, actually there happen. was, and it was in the middle of Jerusalem while that was right before that happened. Yes, I know you didn't. Well, see they that. were protesting because of Israel government. They were protesting against their own government. They weren't protesting against the Palestinians. And that's what they were protesting about. And now all of a sudden they're all kumbaya, and we're on, which I understand why they should be. There were Hasidic Jews spitting on Christians. Oh, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was just a, a handful of people. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. There's always trouble in this world. <laughs> yeah. So that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I forgot about that. That Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That where where <laughs> that woman, a Christian woman, just standing there, and they were they were I guess mouthing back yeah. and forth. Next thing you know, these kids are spitting on this woman because she's a Christian. Yeah. You know, in Jerusalem. Yes. Uh, now did she go off half baked and just so we don't know. Yeah. But there wasn't no love there. Let's put it that way. Well, if if she was following love. But we don't know. She may have just walked away. She might have, yeah. But let's go to Psalms 91. Listen to all this. All right. Because right now we're, we're dealing with all this hatred. Yeah. Or or can be. And our Father is saying, look, this is, you're not going to get to the kingdom of God with hatred in your heart. That's it ain't going to happen. I don't care how, how many Christian plates you're going to fill. <laughs> you know, or how you're going to take care of this and take care of that. And, and help the poor and help the homeless and help all doesn't matter if you if you're going through life without love now that doesn't mean just for your brothers and sisters in your community mm. that means for all of God's children and those that hate you but again how can you love those that hate you it's hard you do it the right way listen Psalm 91 
top. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, that's God, mm. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What does that tell you? That if, if you dwell there with God, meaning what? You not only read what he says, you do what he says. You adhere to it. A lot of people say, well, I don't understand it. You know why? Because <laughs> you're not going to the author and the finisher who wrote this book, saying, Lord, I don't understand it, and I need understanding. I can guarantee you, if you want to understand, he will bring you forth to that understanding. Mm -hmm. However, there's a condition there. Once he brings you to that understanding, he expects you to be obedient and follow it. <laughs> Here lies another problem with a lot of so-called Christians. Well, I guess they are Christians. They accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But they don't want to do what he says. They want to do what they want to do when they want to do it, how they want to do it. And if it goes against the Word of God, guess what? The Word of God goes off to the side. And they're going to follow what they think is right. doesn't work, does it? doesn't work. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. I will not trust in the news media. I will not trust in my spouse. I will not trust in this world. You say, well, not trust. I'm not saying I don't trust my wife. I'm saying I am not going to put her above God. If, if she, and, and we've had this conversation before where we have an, uh, a thought about health or whatever the case may be. And she thinks one thing and I think something else and I go to God, you do too. When we go to God, guess what? We come to a compromise. But it's when we don't go to God that we don't come to a compromise. You know. And sometimes the compromise is going, you may be right, but or I may be wrong, but you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to change how I feel about something. But if this is what you feel God's given you, we'll go with that. Well, that's a good good thing to bring up. Let's let's take a, 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 a husband and wife. You're both praying on a matter, and you're both been given. What you believe, huh? Independently. You're both praying yes. on a matter independently. 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 Not together. Not together. Uh, there you go. Well, I'm uh, getting there, but okay. thanks for jumping the gun. But, yeah. um, <laughs> that's, no, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That um, where two or three are gathered together. You 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 pray and you both come what you believe God gave you to do. However, it's not it's not the same conclusion. What do you do? So how you do come together. But the point is, God's not going to give her an answer and give me something different. Well, we've been there. We've we been, have been we there. We bought that t-shirt. Yes, we have. And you said to me, you mean to tell me that God told you one thing and me another? That's right. And I said, well, maybe one of us isn't thinking godly ways. That's right. When we're, we're it's mulling this over. Makes a big difference. It, you got to have some love in there. Oh, boy. There's the key. <laughs> Did you pray with love? Yes. Mm -hmm. The Did you pray God. with, God, I want my answer to be answered, <laughs> and she to be wrong, Love is not and please, so Lord, tell her that she's wrong, <laughs> right? Love is so that we can have a common ground. No, see, that's, that's not love. love. Not and that's why when, when we've had our differences of opinion, even way back, my, my prayer has always been, Lord, if I'm, if I'm wrong, show me that I'm wrong, and if, if, if he's wrong... Yeah, now, coming to what, what Shane said, uh, when we have prayed, and we prayed this often, uh, when we have prayed together, did we come up with a different conclusion? No. Yeah. Oh. Never. Never. No, not well, ever. Well, there you got it. <laughs> you got it, man. So, what should the world do? We should all pray together. Huh? We should all pray together. What do you think? I think it ain't going to happen anytime soon. Not everyone like, is of the same mind. Yeah, they meet on different because days. Because of why? Not 
ever going to happen until after the millennium yep, period. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, but because we know that, does that mean that we shouldn't try? No, you should try. I mean, if yeah, I if it. I believe that, I shouldn't even be giving this lecture. That's right. Mm -hmm. just go on. No. <laughs> no, but you got to endure. You got to try. Verse three. Yes. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. If you do this, you will be delivered from that negativity of evil. For he shall go ahead. No, I was going to go ahead. For he shall cover thee with his feathers. Of course, God doesn't have feathers. This is a metaphor. And under his wings, that's why they use feathers. That means his loving, saving arms. That's right. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thanks. His truth. His way. Doing things his way. Following his examples. Psalm 91. 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Oh. And there's a ton of that going on today. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he's saying what? Don't You're not going to be afraid of that. No. You could be sitting right in square ground zero in Palestine right now, and if you are obeying God and His truth, yeah. you have nothing to fear. No. Nothing to fear. Why? Because God's in control. You trust God. But how many people don't? And, and, and Israel too. Yes. Israel too. Do you realize? Since it came to my mind, mm -hmm. do you realize on Passover in Israel yeah. they put up a big, uh, big screen? Uh, no, thing. it's a it's a, a painted thing like they do in the movies, you Mural. know, background. Yeah. yeah, and it's of uh, the temple, uh, uh, um, a facade. Yeah, and they sacrifice. Yeah, they sacrifice. Because that's what God wants today. He wants the well, not this day, but I'm talking about on Passover. Yeah. The highest of all holiest of days. Why? Because they don't believe Jesus came yet. Right. They're still waiting on the Messiah. Yeah. Now there are Messianic Jews who don't follow that. But you're in Jerusalem. And you'd think after all these centuries people would learn and know. No. The point is they're not following the word of God. I don't care what they say they are. I know a lot will disagree with that, but they're not. Because if they were following God, they would be loving people. And even if those people came up against them, they would go to them the right way. Listen. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Seven. A thousand shall fall at thy side. That doesn't mean, what is that talking about? Well, it sounds like war to me, doesn't it? Okay. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. That means your power. But that power is of God. But it shall not come nigh thee. In other words, not you. In other words, you are going to defeat those that want to kill you for the wrong mm -hmm. reason. Does that make sense? Now God's saying, look, you're going to have war. You're going to have rumors of war. We studied that in Revelation. You're going to have that all the way to the end. However, you can do it the right way. What did Israel do before? Well, they haven't even invaded you. I haven't watched it today. Have they gone in yet today? No. They're okay. playing around. All right. Well, what did they do? Before they said that they're going to go in and invade them. Warn Supposedly them. they warned them. Now they didn't warn them before they started bombing them, did they? <laughs> and you know what Hamas said? I don't know if you've been covering this day by day, which I have. Yes. That Hamas says, if you bomb us without letting us know. Because right. that's what they used to do. Mm -hmm. All the time. If you bomb us without letting us us, no, we're going to kill the hostages. Oh. Well, they didn't kill the hostages. No. You know. They're both bluffing and playing. Well, they're not bluffing. They're being stupid. Yes. On both sides. 
Sorry, folks. Yes. Both sides are being stupid. Yes. <coughs> I'll following. tell you right now, they're not following what we've read. That's right. Because if they truly can, here's a question: Can you love someone that's trying to kill you? Uh, Jesus did. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what Actually, they do. they did kill him. Isn't that kind of really what happens today? Yeah. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Yeah. But when Jesus returns, is he coming as a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth? No, not that time. Or is he coming as a warrior? Right. But he's got the authority. He's got the authority. And he's, he's, he's being obedient. Right. We can have the authority if we are being obedient. Right. They can have the authority if they're being obedient. What? Well, guess what? If both sides have the authority, we're both being obedient. Yes. And we won't have this war. We won't have war. Right. And that's what it's coming to eventually. That is why at the end of the millennial period, what happens? Evil will be blotted out. That, we won't that means what? Folks, that means killed. Yeah, but there's going to be love left. That's it. And that's all. Because what's being killed is evil. Right. What's being killed today? What's supposed to be being killed today? Evil. Now, whether that, now am I taking sides? You doggone bet I am. But the right way. It's got to be done the right way. And only God can do it the right way. He's the perfect example. Yeah. But, the, but our Father has given us examples over the years of when war is necessary. Because God himself went before Israel. Yeah. In war. But not every war is God in the front. But when he wasn't in front, they lost. They had problems. Guess what? When God's not in front of us, we lose as well. Yeah. Guess what's going to happen yeah. with this shebang? If God's not in front, they're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Who? Both sides. Everybody. Both sides. I hate to say that. Well, it's true. Both sides. I, I don't argue with the truth. I'm out of time. Hmm. Where am I at? Around seven, eight. eight. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Hmm. Uh, we'll end there. The thing is, you can see the reward of the wicked, which is what? To be done away Blotted with. Out. Blotted out from existence. Right. Now, that's at the end of the millennium. And that's... God won't be doing that. They'll be doing that to themselves. Yeah, kind of basically, yeah. Because they'll have a thousand years of pure peace. They get peace peace every single minuscule drop of earth on this planet will be all and peace. For a thousand peace. years. But at the end of that thousand years, guess what? They're still going to be evil. Yeah. Makes no sense, does it? No. Do you believe it? You better believe it because <laughs> it's going to happen. So what do we do today? What... Are we supposed to do today? We are supposed to be obedient servants. Follow God. Yes. If you are put in a position to where someone is trying to do you in, and it can happen, what are you to do? Protect yourself. But, but do it God's way. Better yet, let God protect you. What was the Marine Creed back in the war? Kill them all. Kill them all when God's word them out. Kill them all when God's word them out. I don't know if you want to get there. The thing, well, the reason I use that I because that's the mentality yeah. of, of mankind today yeah. is that we need to go in there and annihilate everyone in that group. Well, guess what? You can't annihilate everyone in that group because there's another group behind them, and guess what? There's another group behind them. So what we need to do as God-fearing, loving Christians is to pray for Israel, pray for their deliverance, meaning to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and pray for the safety even of the Palestinians who are going through the terrible ordeals that they're going through. You say, well, they put uh, Hamas in power, and they did. Yeah, they did all that. But you know what? We're all God's children, and we need to start looking at God's people through God's eyes. Trust God. Follow what He gives you. If someone wants to hurt you, you protect yourself. And guess what? 
I can assure you, if someone is out to hurt you, before they ever even get close, mm. you're going to know it. If, if you're being obedient to a father and following his ways. Because he has placed his wings over you. Mm. And you are trusted with him. You are protected by him. And he will lead, guide, and direct you. Are there any questions about what we covered today? My question is, how does Noah live so long? Well, I'll, I'll hey, answer that after the camera. Let, me. let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of this day and for thy anointing, for thy care and understanding. We thank you for an enlightening us to help us see the things for what they truly are, not what mankind is bombarding us with right now. And we are being bombarded every time we turn around. So we will trust you, Father, and we will place all our hope in you. And even though we go against what the world thinks today, we will follow your leadership and guidance. I pray for everyone here today and their families and all those on YouTube and their families that we watch, that you watch over us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And forevermore, we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. For we love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.